Okay, so good morning if you are joining us in the USA, good afternoon to those in Europe, and good evening to those joining us from Asia. We will begin started now. So PEPLINK's mission statement is to create smart, unbreakable connectivity anytime, anywhere. Today we'll be going through how you can achieve that using PEPLINK's range of products and services to create the perfect solution. So RVs cover many different types of vehicles. We have a solution for all of them. 2020 has been a very strange year and there has been much more full-time usage of RVs and the requirement for connectivity has also increased with this due to the work from home situation. So let's have a look at some of the challenges faced by RVers when staying connected on the move. The system needs to be user friendly. You need to be, have an easy, you need to be easily able to change the settings. You need reliable connectivity, even in remote locations. Our solutions will keep you connected anywhere there is cellular coverage. And if you go beyond cellular coverage, satellite connectivity can also manage that through our solution. Being truly mobile means being connected even while moving. Mobile internet needs to be affordable. How much it costs depends on how much usage you require. So today we're gonna to cover top five features which are useful for recreational vehicles. I'm gonna go through the configuration of, of each of these kind of um, ideas as well. So you can actually see how things are done. So firstly, we'll have a look at um, the basic thing that PepLink routers function with, internet connectivity. We allow you to use any internet connection and any combination you like. You can mix and match Wi-Fi, ADSL, fiber, cellular, and VSAT, et cetera. These can be introduced quickly and easily. For example, Wi-Fi WAN at an overnight stop. So let's have a look at the router interface now. Today I'll be using a Category 12 UBR Go, which is similar to a Transit Duo, which a lot of you will be familiar with. Okay, it doesn't want to connect to me locally, so I'm just going to use uh, in control. Okay, so this is the um, dashboard that you will be presented with when you log into a PetWave router. It'll be slightly different depending on which model you have. Um, this has got two cellular WANs. So on the UBR Go, there are two, two cellular WANs, two Wi-Fi WANs, that's one for 2.4 gigahertz and one for five gigahertz, as well as an ethernet WAN port. The ethernet WAN port can be used for any internet connection presented via a network cable. This could be from a fiber, ADSL or satellite modem. So this unit has been factory reset to its default settings um, and I've plugged an Ethernet WAN into it. So it's only connected um, over the Ethernet WAN and that's done it automatically. I haven't configured any settings in the WAN now. So I'm now gonna connect the Wi-Fi WANs to my uh, Wi-Fi here and you will see it connected. So this would be for an example, when you pull into a park for the night and there's Wi-Fi available there. So the two Wi-Fi WANs, one is 2.4 gigahertz and one is five gigahertz. So we're gonna scan the networks now and we should see the PIP wave 2.4 gigahertz. So we're gonna to connect to that, put the password in and save that. And we can close that one and that one will get connected now. And then on the five gigahertz one, we're gonna do the same thing as well. So obviously you don't have to connect to two, you could just connect to one, um, but connecting to two gives you more reliability. So there you, go. you can see it's connected now on the 2.4 gigahertz one and the five gigahertz one is going to follow soon as well.
Okay, so the next thing we are going to cover is multiple network utilization. So this is one of the key underlying uses for peplink routers. By using different uh, setups such as load balancing, failover, lowest cost, cost and bonding with our speed fusion multi-WAN VPN, you can create an always on internet connection. So let's have a look at how you can utilize multiple different internet connections. So now we're gonna to navigate to the outbound policies. These can be found under the advanced settings. So we go advanced and then we go to outbound policies. So outbound policies dictate where your traffic is gonna go. So let's create a rule directing all traffic to, to um, primarily use Wi-Fi WAN and then fail over to cellular. So this is all traffic. So we're gonna say all traffic. You can call it anything you want. Um, source is any, cause that's any of the devices on our network. Um, and the destination is any, cause we don't care where it's going. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna select priority for the algorithm. And we want priority one to be the Wi-Fi WAN because that's the cheapest internet connectivity available to us. So we can put the two Wi-Fi WANs there. Um, and depending on what the Wi-Fi WAN is, you can put that in there as well. Um, and also have the cellular WANs there. So what this means is that the first network connection to be used is going to be the uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi WAN. Then if that fails, it'll automatically switch to five gigahertz if that fails, it'll switch to the WAN and down to the cellular as well. So we can save that rule now. And you will see it there. So we can then also create other rules as well. Um, the rules are matched from top to bottom. So we can create a, another rule that's going to force an individual device to just use the Wi-Fi WAN. So this is useful if you've got a device that you only want to use Wi-Fi WAN because you don't want it using lots of data when you're on the um, cellular networks. So we can specify the source as uh, the IP address or an IP network, MAC address, et cetera. So say the IP address of the device is 192.168.51.50. And then we want to put the algorithm as enforced and we want to force that to one of the Wi-Fi WANs. And let's say it was a TV. So we can say TV to Wi-Fi only. And then we save that. So as long as that rule that we created is at the top, that TV rules we match first just for that IP address and it's gonna be forced to use the Wi-Fi WAN. All the other devices will have access to the Wi-Fi WAN, which will then also fail over to the cellular. So you can also specify a whole subnet, so create separate SSIDs and things like that. So the third thing that we are going to look at is the Speed Fusion Cloud. So Speed Fusion Cloud was launched earlier this year and allows you to use Speed Fusion simply without having to set up an endpoint to terminate your Speed Fusion tunnel. We have done all the hard work for you. Speed Fusion Cloud is now included with our care plans. Please check out our forum for the full details of the data included. Other ways, um, you can, otherwise you can purchase an appropriate data package. Currently you get, can get a hundred gigabytes free trial. Please visit our website for more information. So let's have a quick look at how to set up Speed Fusion Cloud and get, it, get connected in a matter of seconds. So firstly, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are running the latest firmware. If you've got a device that's running some slightly old firmware, uh, you won't have the Speed Fusion Cloud tab. So what you wanna do is you want to click on get your activation code, enter your email address, and you'll also want to enter the serial number of your device here. Confirm you're not a robot and then submit it. So I've already registered this one, so that's why it says failed. Um, but if we go back to the device now, um, I've got the activation code, it's been sent to me via email. So now if I click on system, 
and we will go to feature add-on and I'm going to copy and paste the activation key. So we're going to paste that there and activate it. And now the 100 gigabytes license is active. So now we can go back to Speed Fusion Cloud. And now you'll see the, the windows change a bit here. So now you can actually select a location. So we click on choose cloud location. You can set it to automatic if you want, uh, but today I am going to select London. So I'm going to go down to United Kingdom, London, and then you click the green tick beside it. And then you click apply changes. And now as simple as that, it is going to create the VPN tunnel to London and get connected. So if we go back to the dashboard now, there will be a window that will pop up here in a second down towards the bottom with the speed fusion details. There we are. So now you can see the speed fusion cloud to London is creating the tunnel. In a few seconds there, it will be connected. Okay, there we go. So now it's established. So now we have a speed fusion um, VPN set up. That's how easy it is to set it up. So now you can direct traffic to use that tunnel um, using your outbound policies that we were looking at just before. So we will return there now. So for example, that TV, that re, the rule we created for the TV to enforce it to only use the Wi-Fi. If we open up this box here now, you'll see there's another one, the Speed Fusion Cloud London. So you can force that TV just to use that um, Speed Fusion Cloud VPN. Another way that is even simpler to do it is in the Speed Fusion Cloud settings. You can connect an individual client to the tunnel. So you can say, I want this device to go to it. Um, can be done by IP address and it will automatically create a list of all the devices on your network here. So currently I only have one computer connected, but I could click that. It's already got the IP address there and then we click save. So now any traffic from my laptop uh, over that router will go out over that VPN to London using Speed Fusion. That's how simple it is. Once, obviously once we click apply changes. Okay, so the fourth thing we are going to cover is secure Wi-Fi WAN. So, so when you connect um, your router to Wi-Fi WAN you, that you don't control, how do you know that your data is secure? Using Speed Fusion, you can encrypt the data over the Wi-Fi link so that nobody can see what you're doing online. So as Speed Fusion operates in encrypted mode by default, any traffic passing between your router and the Speed Fusion endpoint is encrypted and protected from prying eyes. No need to worry about insecure Wi Fi networks anymore. And the fifth thing that we are going to cover is controlling bandwidth. So, controlling bandwidth is important if you're paying for the consumption. So some streaming applications will use the highest quality definition they can push through. Sometimes the throughput can be 20 to 30 megabytes per second just for one video stream. And if you're sitting in a location that's got really fast internet available, it'll pull that through it. So what we can do is we can limit the speed of a particular device to say five or 10 megabytes per second. So doing this, you can make sure that one device is not hammering your internet connection. So this can be applied to individual devices, groups, or whole VLANs. So to do this, you navigate to the advanced settings. And you go to user groups. So you can see I've already created one here. Um, so it's done by IP address. You can also do it with subnet. So I've just made up an IP address uh, at dot 50 and I've added it to the staff network. So once you've created that for an individual device or a whole subnet, you can then go to bandwidth controls. 
you then want to enable individual bandwidth limit. And on the staff network, you can set a maximum download speed of say five megabytes per second and an upload speed of say one megabyte per second. And then you click save and apply. So now what that means is each device that falls into that staff user group will get a maximum of five megabytes per second. So that uh, video stream that you have going that was before easily taking um, 20 or 30 megabytes per second of the highest quality video it can get is now going to scale it down to a, a lower quality but still decent quality video um, and it's not going to use as much of your precious data. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to the slideshow. So now we're going to take a look at some of our products in our portfolio, which will help you create unbreakable connectivity wherever you are. So today we're going to focus on the Transit series and the X series of routers alongside the Puma antennas. So the Transit Mini is a single cellular router which will provide you with basic connectivity. It supports one active cellular connection, Ethernet WAN and Wi-Fi WAN. It can be powered by 12 to 28 volt DC, making it great for low voltage installations. The max throughput of the Transit Mini is 100 megabits per second. It supports band 71, which is great for the US. It has multiple SIM card slots. So you can put two SIM cards in there, but you can only use one at a time. So that can be good for having two SIM cards in there from different providers. If you're in some remote areas that have different coverage from different providers, depending on where you are. The next model we're gonna look at is the Transit Duo. This is very similar to the uh, UBR Go, which is the model I was showing just before. So the Transit Duo is a dual cellular router with Ethernet WAN and two Wi-Fi WAN. So one of the 2.4 gigahertz and one on five gigahertz. As the Transit Duo has two cellular modems, it allows you to create a much more reliable connection with two different SIM cards active at the same time. For the best results and to increase coverage um, areas and throughput, the SIM should be from different carriers. The Transit Duo can be powered from 12 to 48 volts DC, making it great for low voltage installations. This model supports up to 400 megabits of throughput. So that's up from the 100 megabits throughput of the Transit Mini. The final router that we are going to look at is our Powerhouse MBX, which is built for unbreakable connectivity on the road. It comes in two versions, the HD2 and HD4. The HD2 has two cellular modems and the HD4 has four cellular modems. The modems are upgradable, meaning that you can easily upgrade to 5G when coverage is available without having to replace the whole router. The MBX is capable of two and a half gigabits per second throughput making it perfect for situations where high speed is required. The eight ethernet LAN ports support uh, POA, meaning less cables. You don't have to have separate um, cables pairing up IPTV cameras or IP cameras, things like that. Our Puma antennas are built for 5G and perfect for discrete installation on your vehicles. The 401 supports four cellular bands plus GPS. It is a super wide band antenna su supporting from 698 through to 6,000 megahertz. All the Puma antennas are available in black or white with QMA or SMA connectors. So most of our routers are SMA connectors, 
Um, whereas the one router that is QMA is the HD4 MBX that has um, the HD4 MBX category 18 and 5G version uh, QMA connectors. The Puma 020 is for Wi-Fi. This can be connected to the Wi-Fi antenna ports on your PetBlink router to connect to the Wi-Fi WANs around your vehicle. This creates a much better um, connection to the Wi-Fi that is available uh, where, wherever you end up. So this is an overview of an installation with an MBX in a vehicle. You would require two or four Puma 401s plus one Puma 020 on the roof, depending on which model of MBX is installed. Um, if you go with the HD2 category um, 18, you'd need um, four antennas. The HD4 category 12 would require um, two 402s, uh, sorry, 401s and the HD4 category 18 or 5G would require four um, Puma 401s. Using SpeedFusion Cloud, you can then combine all the available connections into a single fast and reliable unbreakable internet connection, keeping you connected anytime, anywhere. In Control 2 can be used to remotely monitor and configure devices all over the world. Perfect support for supporting multiple users in different locations. So some of the top five features of, uh, for RV that we have covered today are SpeedFusion Cloud to create unbreakable connections simply, multiple network utilization to get better coverage and higher throughputs, secure Wi-Fi WAN so your internet connection remains private even on public networks, bandwidth controls to limit data usage and prevent too much data being used, and any internet connection, the ability to add any internet connection to the mix. So have a look at the YouTube Changing Lanes, the YouTube channel Changing Lanes. They've got an amazing video showing how they use our equipment to live and work in their amazing RV. Mobile Mustav have a series of videos all about our products and some amazing shots of them being installed in the wild. Links for both of these YouTube channels and videos will be shared in the chat very soon. Okay, time for some questions and answers. So we've already received um, a few come in by email, so I will start with those. Um, if you do have any questions, please use the questions and answer function of Zoom. Um, there have been um, there have been a few questions come in already, uh, but I will start with a few that we've already received via email. So Tate Scott asked, um, would love to hear options. Um, to improve Airstream Connect with PetLink modems, uh, with load balancing on the Max Transit Duo, et cetera, that don't harm Airstream Connect. So Airstream Connect uses, um, generally they use our Transit Duo, and with that you can use all of the features um, of our software without harming anything. You can use load balancing, you could use a Speed Fusion Cloud, um, you can set up however you want. You're not going to necessarily harm anything. Um, if they've set up anything that they said you might not want to change, if they need connection to anything, um, then yeah, you might want to talk to them about that. But generally, you can load balance and send your internet however you want to. Um, okay, George um, George Keller asked about the, the status of Verizon product certifications. Um, so I'll skip to the next slide here. Um, so this slide shows all of our products that are currently certified to be used on the Verizon network. Uh, this is as of today. Um, we updated this recently. 
Um, so the BR1 Classic, the BR1 Mini Core, um, the HD2 IP67, the Transit Category 18, Transit Mini, um, our Flex modules, the Mini Flex modules, um, and the, the Flex module Category 12 and Category 18, as well as all of the MBX models. So all of those models on screen are, um, are certified for Verizon. Okay, I am going to switch to some of the um, questions and answers. I'm just going to go through the chat first because there were a few questions that came in there as well. Okay, so Daryl Wood um, has asked, can one expect superior signal quality using a boosted cellular Puma versus a boosted Yagi directional? Okay, so um, when you say boosted, I'm assuming you mean like a cellular booster. Um, if you use a proper antenna, you shouldn't need a booster. If you install the antenna on the roof and that kind of stuff, get it all uh, installed properly, you shouldn't need a booster. Um, but however, using a Puma versus a Yagi, that really depends on your location. Um, so if you are in a um, built up area close to networks and things like that, then the Pumas will be, will be good. Um, if you're in a very remote location where signal is very hard to get, then yes, a Yagi might be um, what you need to uh, get a directional antenna pointed at the tower. Um, so obviously the Pumas, you don't need to point them a tower, you just um, have them set up and they just work. Whereas the Yagis, you'll need to point them at the antenna, uh, at the cell tower each time you set up. Um, okay, Joel Bean is asking, um, when will you release a Category 18 dual SIM modem? Um, we've got the HD4 MBX, it has got a category 18 version of it. Um, the Transit Duo won't have a category 18 version. Um, there is, there's two kind of reasons for that. One is um, the throughput of the router. So the category 12 modems in the, in the um, HD and the Transit Duo are capable of 600 megabytes download. Um, that's their rated um, throughput per modem. Um, but the router itself is only rated at 400 megabits throughput. So already with two modems in there like that, the modems are already well over spec than the router's throughput. Um, also, we don't have the, the second reason is the space for the antenna connectors because the uh, category 12 modems have two antenna connectors and the category 18s have um, four. So there's just not quite the space on the uh, transit duo to fit that. Um, so if you need dual category 18, you'll want to go with the HD2 or HD4 MBX. Um, it gives you much higher throughputs and you'll, get, you'll see the best um, you can get out of those modems there as well. You won't be limited by the router throughput. Um, okay, the cost of Speed Fusion Cloud. Um, if you go to PipLink, you will be able to find all the details about that. I'm going to bring it up now so you can see it. Okay, so we have, um, well, first of all, we'll, I'll just show you the locations of the Speed Fusion Cloud. So this is our current list of locations. Um, about two weeks ago, we did add a whole lot of these in. So there are a lot more than you might have uh, realized since you last checked. Um, so these are the data plans that we have available for the Speed Fusion Cloud. So obviously we start here with the, um, with the free plan. So you can trial it out and see how it works. So that starts at, um, you get 100 gigabytes free and the throughput's limited at 50 megabytes per second. And it is valid for one month. Um, and then you have the pricing for the additional usage here. So as you can see, the pricing is very, very attractive. Um, and it is, you can give it a go, no risk. 
So that were that question was from Mark. What is the cost of uh, speaker gym cloud? Um, okay, Scott Roberts asks, are there any recommendations for ruggedized hardware versus conventional duty hardware for more off-road orientated vehicles? Um, so you had a VAR saying something to this effect when I when you priced your last install. So with the, the routers that we're covered are the kind of ruggedized ones that are designed to be installed in vehicles, that are designed to be, uh, to withstand vibration. So the transit duos, the um, MBXs, the HD4s, they've all been built to uh, be in vehicles um, and they can take that vibration, that kind of stuff. Um, I think what you're saying about they recommended not using some other ones, maybe that was maybe when they were talking about maybe the Balance uh, 30 LTE, those kind of ones, they are, those ones are designed more to be installed um, in an office and use the cellular as a failover. Um, but yeah, all the products we've been talking about today are designed to be um, designed to be on the road. Um, James asked about um, the Verizon uh, certification there. So we're showing the BR1 Classic working with Verizon. Uh, does the same apply to BR1 Mark II? Um, Travis, could you please um, check on that? Um, I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, from Will Richards, uh, we use a Puma and it's been awesome. Um, it was a big boost to the signal. Will, that is great news. Good to hear it. Um, which uh, modem are you using? Which, which model um, route are you using with that? Okay, I'm just looking through some uh, more of the questions in the chat here, and then I'm going to switch over to um, the questions and answers. Uh, Rob um, Taylor asked, uh, has said, can't find the UBR Go LTE data sheet on your site. Um, we can um, share a link with you for that. Um, the specifications of the UBR Go are um, very similar to the Transit um, Duo, same throughput, um, Wi-Fi, things like that. The main, there's two main differences, well, three main differences with it. Um, one, it has um, three WAN ports, whereas the, uh, sorry, three LAN ports, not WAN ports, three LAN ports and one WAN port. So you can connect more devices to it. One of those LAN ports is also PoE. Um, another difference is the power. It's powered by a USB-C um, power input. And then the third major difference is it supports our um, remote SIM technology. So you can use a SIM injector or remote SIMs with it. Um, we've covered that in some other webinars there and there's lots of info about it on our forum as well. Um, by the way, guys, if there's any features of the configurations that you want me to cover a bit more, um, I can actually go back and go through the configurations live with you if there's any kind of settings that you want to see um, changed and, and things like that. So yeah, put those in the questions and answers as well. Okay, so I'm just looking through a few more questions here. Um, Uh, Joey Jansen asks, will there be any eSIM ready um, PEPLINK devices coming soon? Um, we have got a one eSIM product that will be coming out very soon. It's called the Max Adapter. Um, there will be more information about that um, coming out soon. Um, but that is a, it's more of a hotspot device that you plug into your computer. So it'll be single cellular. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the hardware team is planning with um, any other eSIM products in that, um, but it's it could be something that might be coming. I'm not exactly sure on that though.
Okay, so the BR1 Mark II and Transit Duo are both certified for Verizon. I've just had confirmation of that. Um, Marty Weston uh, asks, will the uh, Transit Mini be upgraded with 5G or will a new route be required? So the only routers that we've got that are upgradable are the, um, is the MBX and some of the other X-Series ones like the EPX um, and the uh, Balance 30X and that with the flex modules. So mo routers like the BR1 um, and the Transits, they don't have upgradable modems, so it won't be possible. You'll have to um, get a new router. Um, there will be new platforms out to support the much higher throughputs of 5G as well, because the uh, BR1 throughputs, um, the BR1 is limited to 100 megabits throughput. Um, and if you put a 5G modem in that, uh, it's not going to um, perform as 5G as you kind of expect it to. Um, Chris Summers asked the difference between the BR1 Mark II and the Transit Duo. So the BR1 is maximum throughput of 100 megabits per second, and it is a single cellular router. So it only has one cellular modem in it. The Transit Duo has a router throughput of 400 megabits per second, and it's dual cellular um, throughput. It um, supports higher speed fusion bonding throughputs and all round, it's got better Wi-Fi. It's, it's a much better device um, for throughputs and usage on the road. It allows you to connect to multiple cellular networks at the same time. Um, and with the Prime Care model, it works out to not be much more expensive than the BR1, and you get a lot more for it. So definitely have a look at it. It's definitely worth, worth the extra money. Uh, Scott's asking, is there a recording of the webinar? Yes, we will be putting a recording of this up on, um, it'll be posted on the forum and it'll also be sent out in an email. Um, so to everyone that signed up for it. Um, yeah, so that'll be posted on YouTube, um, probably on Friday, it'll be available. Okay, so now to some more questions and answers that have come in now. Um, okay, so how to connect to those Wi-Fi servers that need our input via a browser? These pages require a name, phone number, et cetera, in order to give us access. So with the um, portals and that kind of stuff, generally what you'll do is connect to the portal um, and then you need to be able to access the, um, the splash page and such. And once you log in, you're authorizing the PIP wave as a device to access that internet, not your end device. And that should be good for however long until the portal kind of signs you out and you need to re-sign in again. Ultimately, it's better if, if there is no portal on the Wi-Fi, but that's not always possible, is it? Um, so Chris Summers asks, when all three options are priority one, which is the preferred outbound path? Okay, so um, let me bring up the one. So are you meaning on, um, you've got the three and priority one here. Um, so if you've got three and priority one here, the um, it'll be depending on how you have your outbound policies set up. So if you have your outbound policy set up to priority or uh, weighted balance and things like that. Um, so if it doesn't match a, uh, a um, rule, it'll go to the default and the default is auto. Um, just in the GUI here, these little question marks here, they've got a lot of information behind them. So click on them, they'll open up little windows like that and actually explain what, uh, what things are. So yeah, here you can create a rule to create different um, different outbound rules to go to different different uh, WANs. Um, Jan asks, uh, can I use other VPN for us like NordVPN? So we, you can't connect the PIP wave um, to the NordVPN, um, but you can use NordVPN on your laptop um, behind the PIP wave. So 
I think what you're asking is by can you use other VPN providers, can you connect the PEP wave to them? The answer is no, you can't. Um, it's not possible to do that. Um, Joe asks, how does Speed Fusion Cloud benefit RV users? So Speed Fusion Cloud um, benefits um, RV users by allowing them to easily utilize um, the benefits of speed fusion of the multi-WAN bonding and hot failover and things like that without having to set up your own um, speed fusion tunnel endpoints. So it means you can simply utilize speed fusion to bond your connections together and keep your connection always on. Um, another question from Joe, would you please discuss how Peplink manages multiple WAN connections round robin um, is the algorithm tunable? Yes, completely. That's here in the outbound policies that we were just having a look at. So in the outbound policies, if we click on add rule, we've got the algorithms here. So again, click on the question mark there. It'll bring up all this information and explain each one there. So you can select the different ones depending on how you want um, the traffic to go. So that can be for all the traffic on, on, the, on the network um, or it can just be for one individual device. So you can set up very specific rules for um, specific devices. Um, and so you could have lots of rules or you could just have simple rules so that all the traffic um, behaves the same way. Okay, there are a few more questions here. Um, so Will Richards, when will the Max BR1 uh, 5G model be coming out? And can you explain exactly what speed fusion is and does? Um, to me, it just sounds like a VPN tunnel, pretty simple, but there may be more to it that I'm missing. Okay, so there, there isn't a BR1 5G model as such um, that has been um, announced or anything yet. So that will be coming in the future. There will be something coming in the future that uh, fills that area of the market, um, but we don't have any details of it just yet. Um, so the second spot, so Speed Fusion. So Speed Fusion is a VPN, but it's a PEPLINK proprietary VPN. It uses multiple WANs to keep your internet connected at all times. So I will show you the, um, the Speed Fusion Cloud that I've set up here. I'll show you exactly what's happening on it and you'll understand it a bit better on um, the multiple WANs, what's happening on it. So if we go Speed Fusion, and we can see that the one connection here to London has got, um, it's using three connections. So this WAN is an Ethernet WAN into my home internet, and the Wi-Fi WAN is also into my home internet, but that could they could be into different internet connections. So um, just for the sake of the demo, let's, let's pretend that they're all different internet sources as such. Um, and then what I can do here now is I can do an internet, uh, I can do a speed test. So I'm going to switch that to download. Um, just remember that um, this is a free trial that I'm using here as well. So it's going to be limited to 50 megabytes per second. So I'm going to hit download here. And as you can see, the download, that data is coming across three different WANs there. And it's aggregating it to be up just below 50 megabytes per second. At the same time, what we can also do here is simulate a WAN failing. So I'm going to change this to uh, 200 seconds just so that this test keeps on going while I'm changing them. So if we were on a Skype call or something like that now, that traffic is going to be split. And you can see it's split over the three different connections. And let's say, for example, this the Wi-Fi WAN fails. And we can't we turn that off. So that could be because someone's unplugged the router or something, that kind of stuff. And now you can see that all the traffic is now switched and all going through the, the WAN. When the Wi-Fi WAN comes back, it's going to start routing traffic over it. So you can see it's back now and boom, now it's routing traffic as well. And then someone unplugs that cable and that WAN has gone down now and all the traffic is going over the Wi-Fi WAN there. And we can turn on the other Wi-Fi WAN and it's going to load balance it. Uh, across that one as well. So if you were on a Skype call or something like that, the whole time that those WANs were going up and down, as long as you had one WAN available, that 
Skype call would have just kept on going. You would have not even noticed that the WANs went up or down. So that, that's what Speed Fusion is. It keeps you connected all the time as long as you've got one connection available and you don't even notice it. Um, I hope that answered that question, Will. Um, okay, John is asking, would I still need a cell phone booster like a Wilson Wii Boost? Um, if you have proper antennas properly installed up as high as you can get them in that, you shouldn't need a um, repeater like that. Um, it really depends on your location. You might find you end up in a very rural location and a booster does work for you. Um, but generally a booster would not be required. Um, what I'd recommend you focus on rather than a booster is going for um, uh, nice short antenna cable runs. So if you can install the router up high up, very close antenna, that's, that's the best um, kind of uh, way to go. Focus on the antennas and, and short antenna runs. Um, so Bob says the Max BR1 Mini LTA would be a good option for an RV. Um, yeah, so the BR1 is a good option, um, but what we're really um, promoting is the use of our um, multi-cellular ones. So multi-cellular routers give a much better user experience. It means you can properly utilize uh, things like the Speed Fusion um, and multiple SIM cards, multiple carriers, that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, Chris Summer asks, um, can you do uh, connection bonding with a Max BR1 Mark II with two different carrier SIM cards or with a mix of WANs? So with the BR1, it's a single cellular modem. It has two SIM card slots, but only one modem. So you can't bond the two SIM cards together because you can only use one of them at a time. Um, but you can, when using Speed Fusion Cloud, you can bond um, the, um, the active SIM card and the Ethernet WAN or the Wi-Fi WAN. You can bond those three. So you can mix the WANs up there, but you can't actually bond two SIM cards with a BR1 because it, it is single modem as such. Um, if you did want to bond two SIM cards, you would um, be best off looking at the Transit Duo. Um, Pete Paisley, uh, he said, you mentioned satellite support, please elaborate. So if you need satellite, you can use um, the Ethernet WAN ports on our router. So you're still going to need to use the satellite modem um, that's supplied by your satellite provider. So you would um, set that up as normal, um, but then instead of connecting to the Wi-Fi that modem um, directly, you can actually plug the Ethernet into the PIP wave. And then the PEP wave can handle the usage um, directing different traffic to the different WANs. So you can have um, use the satellite as a failover. So you can use cellular primarily and failover to the satellite. Um, or if you want to have certain things just go to the satellite, you can do that. It really depends on your setup. Everyone has a very different setup and your setup will be personal depending on your um, connectivity um, options. And we, we've just got the routers that can support all those different types of options. Uh, Scott Yates uh, um, asked, can the Max Transit, uh, Max Duo, so obviously the Max Transit Duo, act as a local Wi-Fi access point? Yes, it can. So it has Wi-Fi WAN and LAN simultaneously. So it can be connected to uh, Wi-Fi and use that as its internet source and also um, broadcast um, its Wi-Fi um, as a LAN access point as well as such. Um, George Keller asks, can you discuss VPN usage over cellular outside of Speed Fusion? So I'm assuming this means that you, um, like a VPN, like the Nord VPN that was mentioned earlier, or something like that. So you can use that outside. Um, so that would be direct from your laptop out over the connection that's provided by the PEP wave. And that would um, that would work, no problem. Uh, people do that. Um, that can also be used for VPNs to connect to offices and things like that. 
um, corporate setups, things like that as well. Okay, I'm just going through some more of the questions here. Um, Simon Bush asks, do we need to add a Wi-Fi access point like the AP1 Mini for a wireless um, device if using one or both Wi-Fi WAN frequencies? No, you don't. Um, as I just mentioned for the previous question there, the Wi-Fi WAN and access point function simultaneously. So uh, if we look here on the dashboard, um, you can see that we've got the two Wi-Fi WANs connected here. And we've also got the Wi-Fi access point enabled and running. And that's all running using the same Wi-Fi. So there is no need for an additional access point. If you want to, you can put in an additional access point, which will um, increase your coverage and things like that. Um, but you don't have to. You can keep it all in one device. Um, Mihal asks, can only VPN traffic be forwarded to the Speed Fusion? Uh, in your example, you use the UBR Go. Is it discontinued uh, on the website? There's only UBR. No, the UBR Go is not discontinued. It's a new model. Um, it's not on our website yet. Um, we can share with you the data sheet for it. Um, if you head over to the forum, uh, we will post some information, the links and that kind of stuff there. Um, so the links to like the data sheet for the UBR go, um, and there's a few other models there as well. Um, for, uh, oh, so, uh, Jonathan DeBolz asks, we are using balanced routers as endpoints. Is there a possibility to do a hot fail over to Speed Fusion Cloud? And is there a possibility to use a VRRP at layer two for redundancy between a balanced router and a virtual machine? Okay, so there's a, quite a bit going on in there. Um, so you can use a balanced router as the endpoint for your own speed fusion. So you can set up speed fusion between um, two peplink pip -link routers, um, and you don't uh, use speed fusion cloud for that as such. Um, at the same time, you can also use Speed Fusion Cloud in that mix as a hot failover, as like a standby backup if you wanted to. Um, and is there a possibility to use VRRP at layer two for redundancy between the balance router and virtual machine? Um, I think we'll need a little bit more information on exactly how you want to set that up, um, but there should be a way that something can be done around that to create some redundancy there for you. Okay, just going through some more questions here. There are quite a few here, so I'm going to try and crack through them. Um, I'm just going to switch back to the chat there. So there's a few questions, a few more conversations that have been um, going on there. Uh, just looking through it. Um, so, John asks, is the pricing for Speed Fusion per month or for the total dur duration, list, uh, duration listed? So, it's for the duration listed. Um, so, if we, um, where did I have that? I think it's happening. Um, yeah, so you'll see here we have the um, if we go Speed Fusion Cloud. So, with these packages, so if we look at the um, package B, plan B, that's 500 gigabytes, which is valid for six months. So it's not 500 gigabytes per month. It's 500 gigabytes of which you can use over a six month period. If you use that 500 gigabytes before the six months is up, you can just purchase another 500 gigabytes. You don't have to wait until that six months is up. Um, or you could purchase a larger package. Uh, and then again, down here, like the 10 terabytes, that is valid for three years. 
So you've got three ter uh, 10 terabytes that you can use um, at any point over those three years. Could, so you could use that 10 terabytes all in one month if you wanted to, um, and then just purchase another 10 terabytes. Um, it's, it's very flexible that way. Um, so that was a question from Jan. Um, okay, so from Will Richards, um, I use about 500 gigabytes per month. Is there a plan for that? Um, it depends where you're located. Um, there is diff different regions have different plans. I know Europe is um, tends to be a lot uh, easier for data packages. Um, so there's definitely packages out there. I do know of clients that are using um, up around 10 terabytes a month on cellular um, in Europe while roaming. Um, that's done through packages with um, four SIM cards through the same provider. So it is possible to get large data packages, um, but obviously the more data you use, the more it is going to cost. Um, Mark, um, us, um, sorry, you might have already mentioned it. Um, which PIP Wave device are you doing this demo on? I'm, I was doing the demo here on a UBR Go. Um, it does say, yeah, so it says UBR Go there. So the UBR Go is like a transit duo. It's um, similar specs to it, just a few minor differences. Um, again, we'll share those um, details on the forum there. Okay, scrolling down a little bit here through a few more questions. Uh, okay, it's a few more, it's just a bit of conversation. Okay. Okay, I'll come back to the questions and answers now. Um, so, okay, so Mick says, uh, just some feedback. I have a transit duo category 12 plus a duo category 18 in the WAN port. So I'm assuming you've got a, uh, a transit duo category 12 and a, um, a transit category 18 single modem in the WAN port. Uh, with Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile um, using Speed Fusion, uh, and it is head and shoulders above other solutions. I've tried almost everything else. My wife now does conference calls while we drive, and we're so confident in the connectivity. That is great. That is exactly what uh, we strive to do, and it's great to hear that you're getting the results that you want. Okay, uh, once another question here. Uh, once a device is out of warranty, you cannot manage it through in control. Um, is it possible to extend the warranties to continue to manage it within control? Yes, it is possible to extend the warranty. Um, so you can, for the BR1s um, and some of the balances, you can just purchase just the in control through license just by itself. Um, but for the transit duos, the MBXs, and those models, it needs to be in warranty um, to utilize in control too. So you can easily extend the warranty and you will continue to benefit from those features. Um, some of the models like our, um, the Transit Duo now also come in Prime Care and Prime Care includes warranty and the um, in control as well and the Speed Fusion bonding license. Um, Daniel is, uh, has asked, can the software be improved to speed up the time to switch SIMs on a modem? It takes five minutes or more today. Um, it sometimes depends on the networks as well, because um, the SIM cards do need to um, kind of connect to the networks as well. There's, there's only so much we can um, speed up in that way. Um, if it does, uh, five minutes does seem like a bit long, 
Um, if you want to open up a support ticket for that, um, the engineers will definitely have a look at it for you. Um, George Keller um, has asked, under advanced, there is IPsec VPN. Um, how do you use that? So the IPsec VPN that is in our routers is for site to site connections. So that'd be to connect um, uh, a PIP VPN router to something like a firewall in an office uh, or a corporate situation. Um, that's what that's for us. It's not to connect to a IPsec um, VPN service as such that you can sign up for. Uh, Mihul, uh, sorry, what about only VPN with Speed Fusion? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what um, you're uh, meaning there, but there's, you can use um, a VPN from your laptop straight out over the PIP wave or through Speed Fusion as well. So you could have VPN inside a VPN. Um, that's completely possible as well. Okay, um, there's a few more questions there that I'm going to get through as well, um, but we're getting towards the end of them there. Um, if you do have any questions, please, um, please ask them now and I will try and get them answered. If there's any more questions there. Okay, uh, Marty asks, uh, will the transit mini be upgraded with 5G or will new router be required? Yeah, a new router will be required. The, uh, the, the transits are not um, upgradable as such. Um, Anthony asks, what is the status of the Max BR1 mini? I'm assuming that is in relation to the Verizon certification is what you're meaning there. Um, so if we have a look at the go back to slideshow. Um, so we've got the BR1 mini core is uh, certified for Verizon. Um, I will check on that because the BR1 mini, uh, I believe should be certified as well, but we will, I will check with uh, Travis on that. Um, Bill, uh, Bill Johnson, um, using the PIP wave surf Soho Mark through, I found that in case of high density situations, the five gigahertz Wi-Fi is when fails back frequently to 2.4 gigahertz. Um, each time taking the road two to three minutes to fall back. Is there any fix for this? So the route uh, presents a more reliable connection um, for the connected users. Um, could you please open a support ticket for that? Um, it does um it sounds like there might be something going on with the wi-fi but if it if it is dense and the wi-fi is kind of um using its protocols to to make things better then that's just naturally what wi-fi will do um yeah but open a support ticket if you feel it's, it's not working as you would expect it to um also post it on the forum there someone might have a little trick for it there's there is a lot of information on the forum there Uh, Jonathan says, we notice that the bandwidth limit is defined per interface, uh, but we want to limit um, a total limit. Uh, we also know bursts of data influences our audio codecs when um, combining a high latency connection satellite, for example, in the Tour de France. Um, yeah, so with, um, I'll answer the second question there first. So if you're using a um, high latency connection such as satellite, um, and you've got that in with Speed Fusion, you'll only want it as a failover, um, like a hot failover for Speed Fusion. You don't want to bond it with um, the other connections. The bonding, the latency difference is just too much and the bonding will not work as you expect it to. Um, and then defining the uh, bandwidth limit per interface, I'm assuming that's on the ethernet WAN interfaces, um, you can define it. Um, if you want to define a, um, a total limit, um, you can use the um, user groups and bandwidth reservation groups there as well to set up something that would suit your setup.
Okay, so I'm just going to go down to the bottom of the questions now. I think I have answered most of the ones that I can for now. Um, Daniel um, asks, can the iPhone iPad apps be improved some? Uh, would like to be able to switch SIMs from modem from the app. Okay, that is a great feature request, Daniel. Um, if you could um, put that on the forum. So on the forum, there's a lot of... Um, things like this. And that's where a lot of our features come from. And if other people comment on and say, yeah, that's a great thing we want, we, the engineers will work on it. Um, there have there has been recently a um, update on the um, app, which was to do with the Wi-Fi WAN. So you could manage the Wi-Fi WANs within the app. Um, I believe that would be a very good um, addition to the app um, for the this um, market as well. So have a look at that. Um, and yeah, to switch sims, yeah, that's definitely one that um, could be added to it. So put it on the forum, see what other people think about it too. Um, Joel asks, will the Max Transit series ever have USB for tethering? Um, so the Max Transit does not have a USB um, on it. Um, and we don't um, really have a plan for that. Um, if you want USB tethering, you'll have to be looking at like the um, MBX and those kind of routers that have got the USB ports on them. Um, and obviously Android um, phones as well on that. Um, however, for the USB tethering, um, our Max adapter that we talked about that has the eSIM support, that will be supported via our US, the devices that have USB. So that is one thing there as well. Uh, Marcelo asks, please, Pipling have plans to launch a BL1 Mini core supporting B bands 1, 3, 5, 7, and 28. Um, okay, so the BL1 Mini core, let's have a quick look at the specs on that. Um, so if we go products, uh, BL1. So BL1 Mini core. Um, and if you haven't checked out a new website, go and check it out. There's a lot of information there now, a lot of new information. So the BR1 Mini Core, currently there's just the US model that supports these bands. So it's a category four um, modem. So the BR1 Mini Core is designed as a, um, a device for where connectivity is required, but it's not necessary. It doesn't have to be always on and not, uh, it doesn't really have the speed fusion, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's it's more um, lower end kind of installs as such. If, if you're after something that covers more bands, um, you need to look at a different category modem router. So something that has category six or 12 um, modems in it. Something a little more like the BR1 Mark II, um, that'll have it um, there. Okay, so I think um, that has covered it all for now. So um, if you do have any other questions, um, please head over to the forum and um, put them there. We will share the links and things like that. Um, and also the uh, spec sheet for the UBR Go that everyone has been asking for. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending today. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time.